Hey, what's going on, boys? It's your man, CGOD. We're back again. Thank you for tuning back into the channel. We're back on the Softail Deluxe today. We're going to finish the disassembly of the front end as well as painting the lower fork legs. So, as you could see, haven't really started on much. What we're going to be doing today, like I said, removing the wheel, releasing the forks from the bike, pulling it all apart. We're going to be doing like body work to the fork legs prior to painting them. As you can see, we've already pulled off the reflectors from the side. This is what we're gonna be using today, boys. So as you can see, it's Duplicolor Scratch Filler Primer, just, you know, to get a nice smooth look. And we're gonna be running this Duplicolor, I believe it's called like Bun 0100. Let me see if I can get it in focus for you boys. About right there, either way, Bun 0100 Universal Black. Uh, but looked on the forums, on Facebook, the Harley pages, everything as far as I'm concerned is the closest to vivid black there. And then as you can see, we're going to be using the Spray Max 2K Clear just to finish it off, boys. So for now, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and start getting the bike jacked up, pull the wheel off, um, start taking apart... I don't know if you would call this a nacelle or whatever, but I start taking that apart to where we can pull the forks out. And then at that point, we're going to do a little bit of sanding and stuff just to make sure they look legit before we put them in paint. So let me go ahead and start on that, boys. I'll bring you back. All right, boys, so it's just that easy. Got the front taken apart now. Front wheel is off, little spacer, John. This bike does have ABS, so that is what this piece is. For those of you who may be wondering, it just goes pretty much, I believe it acts as a spacer because I didn't see a spacer fall out when I pulled it. So, yeah. All right, boys, but now we're essentially ready. <clears throat> From here, all we gotta do is loosen up a pinch bolt that's right here on the lower part of the trees. And then what I'm gonna do, instead of actually taking out like the whole like top portion of it, I'm gonna leave this installed <clears throat> and then just loosen it. You might be able to see right here at the very top of the fork, right there, you see the little uh, like cut right there. We're just gonna loosen it from there and drop all the spring tension and everything as we bring it out and we're gonna be using new springs and oil and all that stuff so what we do with the old stuff really doesn't matter boys so let me get to it all right boys so to sh further show you what i'm talking about <clears throat> you could see i got it loose now so essentially like you just turn this you know and eventually whenever the spring or the threads run out the spring tension is going to essentially kind of like try to push it down I don't know how much this one will have, but the Road King didn't really have very much. So like I said, right inside of here, there in the middle, I don't think you guys can see. Well, either way, right down there, here is the pinch bolt. So we got that loose. Um, I did use a rag and a pair of channel locks to break this loose. But from here, I mean, it's still kind of hard, but you can do it by hand. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do to get this the rest of the way out. And then I'll pull the other one. We're going to drain the old oil out of them and remove the suspension. And then from there, they should be ready to start getting prepped for paint, boys. All right, guys. So as you can see, we have indeed pulled the first fork leg out. Literally just goes through there. Maybe get a better view of that pinch bolt. I guess it's just not light enough, bright enough. But either way, it's there. And then as you can see, this is where it threaded into the top. This is the top fork um, cap, I suppose. 
which goes through the top of the tree and gets bolted to this top nut so it's like a three-piece design but either way we got it out so as you could see the spring tension that i was telling you about this pretty much like as soon as the threads let go it pushed it all the way down so we're gonna empty out the oil that we have in here as well as remove the springs and then pull the other side and we'll start getting these cleaned up for painting boys all right boys so moving right along we pulled both the forks and i kind of got ahead of myself but not really you know because i'm gonna do it anyways but i did also pull the the tin cans the little fork covers so i mean those are just two little bolts that hold each one on as you can see she's fully disassembled i got the fork legs here letting the residual oil drain out so that's cool we got the stock springs over here this is like all it comes with so i mean there's that but um like i said we've got a progressive drop-in kit that we're gonna do but first we got to get these ready for paint and then i think i might just like mock them up here somewhere on my patio to get spraying so hopefully we don't get wind or anything like that but yeah boys should come out pretty slick let me get to it all right guys so what i went ahead and did is i took i believe it's like 180 grit or so some kind of sandpaper that i had laying around and i went through and i kind of like you know body worked it or sanded it whatever you want to say so this is essentially what they look like now there was kind of like i don't know if it's like a clear coat or what that goes over it but also like in certain areas of the fork like you can see here there's like little like pitting type it's like a texture so I kind of like got rid of that. Everything that you see here, like you kind of see it here also. All of that is smooth to the touch. And we have what's called a scratch filler primer. Let me see if I can get it. Oh yeah, there you go. We have a scratch filler primer. So hopefully using this primer will net us. I mean, it's soft to the touch. Like you cannot feel the texture at all on the forks. So hopefully using that scratch filler primer, it'll go ahead and fill anything and smooth it all out. Um, I believe on this one, yeah, on this one, there was like a tiny bit of scuffing, which I don't know if you'll even be able to see it. There's still some up here, but I got rid of any type of like defect throughout the lower portion of it, because once we lower it, all this is essentially gonna get covered. So I'm not terribly worried about that part. But once again, the scratch filler primer hopefully saves us on that. So what I'm going to do now is I got the air compressor filled with air. I'm going to go ahead and blow these off. And then I'm going to be using like 90% alcohol to go ahead and clean them up before we finally begin spraying. And I'm going to go ahead and set them up over here on this little play set that I built for my kids a while back. So I got everything removed. They're going to be right there. It's a backyard setup, you know, but what are you going to do? Let me get them cleaned up and hung and then I'll bring you guys back. All right, so we started cleaning it up with this 91% alcohol. Got it all mocked up. And what do you know? It starts getting all types of windy, boys. So this is a no-go unless you want a bunch of specks in your paint. But uh, yeah, this is how we had it mocked here. It's entirely too windy though. So unless I find a better place to paint, I, mean, I don't know if you guys are able to see all this stuff but like it's just super windy super no go boys so yeah unless i find another spot to paint we're just gonna have to wait another day and then we'll start spraying these because it's not worth ruining the forks boys so wish me luck all right boys so finally we got a beautiful 70 plus degree day with like zero wind so i got these old girls mocked back up here as you can see um went ahead and wiped them down with alcohol again they're pretty much ready to be sprayed so that's going to be the next thing i got our cans over here warming up a little bit in the sun and then we're going to go ahead and be hitting it with the primer obviously first and in doing so we've got to shake it up a good bit you guys know but either way, boys, I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then we're going to hit it with probably like two coats of primer. So I'll bring you guys back after that. All right, boys. All right, boys. So here they are in their first coat of primer. So I mean, I apologize for there not really being any sun here. But I mean, 
they look primed. <laughs> Let me see if I can catch a little bit of sun for you guys. Yeah, and like I said, I'm probably gonna do one more coat on them. Damn, yeah, that one's like really dark, but yeah, just so you could know, I guess. First coat is on, boys. Gonna let it dry for about 10 minutes. I'll hit it with another coat, and we should be good to go. Continue. Like I said, it's not the best area. I'm standing right in dirt and stuff, so really trying not to kick anything up. Um, very minimal wind, as you can see, like trees not even moving or anything like that. It's pretty warm out, so pretty good conditions, boys. We should be good. Like I said, I'm gonna hit it with one more coat of the clear or of the primer, and then we should be rolling, boys. All right, boys. So we got two coats of primer on it. As you can see, I got my PPE on, you know. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and let them chill now for about an hour or so. Go ahead and let the primer really dry. I mean, they look real good though. You know what I mean? Like, they look sick. We got this one here. But yeah, like I said, so we're gonna let them sit for about an hour and then we'll give them a nice little alcohol wipe down again before hitting it with like two to three coats of the actual paint. So, yeah, once again, guys, we are using this uh, Duplicolor Perfect Match, and it's the Bun 0100 color to get the Vivid Black. And then we're going to be topping it with our 2K clear coat here. And I want to do, like, two to three coats of this also, probably three. And, uh, yeah, so, I mean, that's the plan, boys. Like I said, my ghetto setup, boys. But it is what it is. We're getting it done. Now, I will say, I thought about getting them powder coated, but I had already bought the paint and I've already, like, done a lot of work, you know? So, <laughs> I decided I'm going to go ahead and do this. If it does ever chip or anything like that, I'll probably disassemble them again and then send them off to get coated instead. But, at this point in time, I don't plan on doing chrome unless I get a chrome swing arm and I don't plan on doing that. So, yeah, boys, let me get these dried up and i'll bring y'all back all right guys might be a little bit hard to see but we got our first coat of black on it probably really hard to see but just know that they are indeed black and like i said i'm probably gonna do at least two coats might do one more but it covers pretty well paint finish so far it looks real nice and smooth like I said at least two coats after I hit another one we'll see how they look but other than that after this I'm gonna let the paint dry for at least 30 minutes to an hour and then I'll come out and start hitting it with a 2k clear and then at that point boys we should be you know kind of nearing completion a little bit so Hopefully we get these Johns looking real nice, boys. And then I'll bring y'all back, all right? All right, boys, so we are now done spraying the black. We did three coats, like I said. And you can kind of see them a little bit better now, hopefully. But they are indeed very black. So, I mean, that's what we wanted, you know? Look good. They look real good. Don't have any runs or anything like that. Um, I've done a little bit of spray painting in my time, but I mean, I'm nowhere, you know, I'm not a professional painter or anything like that, but they do look very good, I will say. And hopefully they only get better once we put the clear coat on. And I do want to do like two to three coats. Um, I've painted the fork lowers before on my Honda Shadow previously, and, uh, the paint was kind of like fragile, you know? So that's kind of why... I would say powder coating would be the better option. However, it's not the route we went today. So hopefully we can get two to three coats of the 2K clear coat on there. And I wanna let these cure for at least like a week or two before putting them on the bike, you know, just so that they'll be less prone to like getting rock chips and stuff. Cause that's essentially what I'm worried about. Cause that's just how it happens, you know? 
you get rock chips or I think I accidentally like tapped a wrench on one of them and that also messed it up but yeah boys this is gonna be the last time you'll see them without clear coat so that'll be coming up right now all right guys so we got the first coat of the 2k clear coat on um, so far it's coming out pretty decent the last time I used this stuff uh, hold on <sighs> gotta stay safe boys PPE safety is number one the last time I used this stuff um, on the first coat I went kind of light and I feel like that added a lot of like orange peel so let me show you guys this is after the first coat of clear um kind of hard to see i'm sure but it looks pretty smooth like glassy it doesn't look like it's gonna have a bunch of orange peel so i mean hopefully you know i don't even know if you guys can really see it too well hopefully this one you kind of can but i mean so far they're looking pretty gosh darn mint so like i said i'm gonna do at least three coats minimum of three coats of the clear but I am going heavy or heavier this time than I did the last time because last time as I said it looked kind of like fish fish eye orange peel whatever you want to call it but yeah as the Sun continues to move westbound you'll be able to get a better view of what this is gonna look like I wish it would focus a little better for you boys but I guess it just don't like you guys, you know? But either way, I mean, we're getting there. They're definitely black, so that's cool. Um, I'm gonna let this dry for like 10 to 15 minutes, hit it with another coat, and then let it dry again, etc. And then we should be good to go, boys. So, yeah, I'll bring you guys back. We're pretty much, I'm just gonna go ahead and show you guys the finished product after this. Um, I'm gonna let these sit here, but yeah. Okay, boys, so as you can see here, this is after the third coat of the 2K Clear. And I mean, she looks beautiful, brothers. Like, the finish is amazing looking. Very, very nice. If you ask me. She need to be able to get her to focus. Oh, yeah. See, there you go, brothers. Look at that. Like, look at this one. Let me come over to this side. Hopefully it's in focus for you guys, but I mean, it's looking rather marvelous, boys. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and leave these here and let them dry, um, probably for a while. And then I'm gonna go ahead and move them inside of my house so that they can like cure and like I said, I'd like to leave them for at least like a week or two before we actually like mount the axle through them and stuff like that. And the brakes, the fenders, you know what I mean? Just so that it gives all the paint time to like fully cure up and like be as durable as possible. So that's the idea behind it. But yeah, boys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I'll let you guys know exactly how it comes out um, in the next video where we're gonna be putting the suspension and everything, the wheels and the fenders and all that stuff back on the bike. And I mean, obviously the forks will be on there. So make sure to stay tuned for that. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll catch you guys in the next one, boys. Deuces.